Hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to do another video. Uh, this is the 2004 Mazda 6. It's, this is the V6 model. And the problem I have, uh, um, this car having problem with is the uh, the the coke showing that P14 A7 and. P2227. So that codes, those two codes basically mean that there's a, uh, there's a problem with EGR. Here, the EGR here, either the two saw noise here, but I don't believe that uh, the saw noise go bad, but this car have about 140,000 miles on it. So I'm very sure, I didn't even test out saw noise thing, I just uh, very much assume that. The plug uh, EGR valve is just a very common problem with Mazda. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, the EGR valve is plugged up. So, um, so the, this video is uh, show you how to, uh, I guess, try to remove this piece right here. It's a little bit pain in the ass. That, um, anyway, so I think it's, uh, it's helpful if I make a video if somebody is because. Uh, this is a common problem with this car. So, <clears throat> here's the battery right here. This piece right here is right there. This is the battery holder. So basically, is here's the screw here. Take from a 10 millimeter. Take it out. It's way clean. Take this piece out. Okay. Remove the battery cable. The negative. Positive. Remove them. Okay. Take the battery out. Okay. When you take the battery out, there should be the, the, the bolt here and the bolt here, number ten millimeter. Take this piece out. When you take those two pieces out, give you some screw here to work with. The next one you're gonna do this bolt right here. This is number eight millimeter. This is right here. This this one right here is holding the bracket, the transmission lift stick right here. It's holding it. So you need to take it out. When you take it out, this piece right here basically get in the way. This tube right here, transmission fluid tube. So what you do is you just move it. And what I do is like in the manual and service manual tell to tell you to, re, to remove this uh, hole. Okay, this is a cooling hose. But um, I'll try to work with that remover to see if it can be done. So I remove this bolt. <laughs> this hole right here is right here earlier. It's the location. It's right here. So what I do, I push it. I push a hole. Push this hole right here all the way back. You don't have to take it out, you just push it. What I did was, well, the reason I do that so I can give me the access here, so I can unbolt this one. Here's, here's the tube right there. Okay, so that it give me a more room to work with, so I can remove it. But before, uh, I suggest you, this bolt is very difficult to uh, unscrew it. My suggestion would be, is that what I did was, I before I did it, um, I, I lubricate with the plaster, like rust remover or, hold on, let me see if I have it, I can show it you. Like something like this, BP plaster, penetrating. So, <coughs> probably best is get uh, lubricate it first and leave it overnight. Uh, and in the morning, leave it overnight then in the more early before I re remove it um, I put a little bit more on there and see, let it sit about five minutes then uh, unscrew it uh, you need to do counter lockwise uh, to open okay remember here we here counter lockwise turn this way is it counter lockwise yeah counter clockwise to open okay 
everything here and just turn like that to open. Okay. I, ha I have, I got it loose now. Um, so this, see, that's why I need to move this piece further. I say, further say I can. So give me a, a little bit more room so I can unscrew this thing right here. Because if you don't, you don't have space to do it. You don't, you don't have space to, uh, to turn this. So. So I, after I move it, I have a little more space here to work with. See, I can give me a little more room here to work with. See, see this thing right here, hit right here, see it? That's why you need to push this as far as you can. So I can give you some room to work with. Okay. So, I mean, after these right here, after you remove those, it's going to be easy to do. So this is the hardest one. After you take out that, then we're going to remove this hole right here. Just clamp it and clamp that. There's one here. Just remove one here and one two here. There's another one back there. You can you see it? Right there. You see? This one, one here, one here. We need to remove it and that one. And I think this should come up. Okay, by the way, seeing I'm here, <laughs> this one right here is a specific valve right there. See, it's wet and everything. I suggest you to go ahead and replace it. I'm going to do that next after I finish this in a specific valve right there. Can you see it? Right. Here, at the PCV valve. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to continue. To remove this right here and see how it goes. So after I remove this bolt bottom here, um, next this is number. This I remove this right here. This bolt here. This bolt here. The one back here. Okay. This right here is the eight millimeter socket. And when you when you unbolt those. This thing comes loose and you should be able to take it out. So, the one thing left is the connector back here. You can see it now. So, I need to remove the connector. Okay. So, I got it down. I got it out. To remove this connector, you need to push down this right here. Push it down. Push this top right here down and pull straight out. This is what this thing look like. This is the HGR assembly. So what I'm going to do to clean it up, you see a lot of stuff deposit back here. I'm pretty sure this thing block up. You can see. Anyway, I'm going to remove this four Fill the right here, one, two, three, four, and try to clean it. I put out the sun, as you can see. You can really see it. Anyway, to see what it looks like. Okay, I, one thing I, I really want you guys to uh, to uh, to pay attention is this thing right here. These four bolts, these four heads, fillet heads right here, is very very difficult to remove them without tripping them. You see right here because I learned. I unscrewed this thing in the past and I'm telling you they are they got trips so easy. So to avoid tripping this bolt right here, the screw, my best advice for you to get something like this. Because if you use the regular flat head screwdriver, you're very likely gonna trip them and you won't be able to open it. So get this something like this and 
and press so press down so hard when you un unscrew them. Okay. So that's why you don't trip them. Because if you trip them, man, tough. Okay. So I, I have this removed. Okay. You see what it looks like. see how it looks like. There's a spring here. Basically, is I get the vacuum when the computer sends a signal to the uh, solenoid, EGR solenoid. I guess when, uh, when the solenoid energizes, it's going to allow the vacuum to go, uh, to go here, to open the port to allow the vacuum to suck it. And I guess it's going to pull this, either pull this thing up or down to open and close this thing and I don't see that I cannot see I cannot tell if my plug or not but you can see what I hope you can see it but I can when it move up and down you can see this thing is go up and down see it's open and closed right this, this port here this port right here when I push it up and down you can see I'm not sure you can see it uh, but anyway, you can, think, you can see this thing move up and down. To open and close to allow the exhaust gas circulate back to the, to the engine. So what I'm going to do is to kind of put a carburetor. I'm going to blow them in here. And probably a top here to try to clean the port. Hopefully it doesn't get uh, like plug up or anything. And I'm going to clean all this out here. I'm gonna put some carburetor in this port right here, try to clean it or anything you know possible and put it back. And hopefully it's, it's gonna fix that curve, but let's see. Okay, so while I have the EGR valve out, I'm going to follow the um, service menu here to test the EGR valve itself. You can see here the EGR valve here. You can see the EGL valve here. So it's have the terminal A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? So the terminal E, A, B, F sent to the power, um, power control module. And you can see if you test the terminal C, E, C, A, D, B, D, F, you're going to get approximately 22 ohms. But when I test my, my 25, and I say it's Inspect resistance of EGR valve coil. If not a specified, replace the EGR valve. Okay, mine is a little bit out of spec, 25 ohms. I'm not sure that really make a difference. Like I say, I'm going to clean the EGR valve. If it still give me the same curve, I'm going to replace the EGR valve because you can see this one say approximately, approximately 22 with my 25. Uh, let's see if can do the measurement here okay so this is uh, A here A let me see I can zoom in A B C D E F so I'm going to measure these two right here this is C uh, C and E C and A and then D and B and D and uh, F. So D, F, D, B, C, A, C, E. Okay, so let's do this. So here, the C here. So I'm put E terminal E. I'm gonna do put terminal C here. Let's do it again. Just bear with me here.
we got 24, 24 and 4 on from C to E. So roughly about almost 25. So we'll have a little bit high. This one say approximately 22, so my 25. I'm gonna do I'm going to do the C and A here. Let's see what I have. I have 24, roughly about 24 and a half. So that's about two point two and a half of um, uh, arms over. The same thing here, I'm gonna do terminal B. These two terminal here, 24 and a half, and A, A, B, C, D, so gonna be so A, B, C, D, so I'm gonna measure terminal B and A. Twenty-four and a half. So basically, all my reach twenty-four and a half. So a little bit high compared to uh, specified here. Say twenty-two. Um, you can see here the back side of it. Okay, you can see how you measure. Mine is a little bit high. And you say, if not, then inspect the following for harness, open a short circuit. I don't think I have that. And um, you say, remove each of valve, inspect for any damage to clogging. That's what I think only things clog. Because, you know, most of over 100,000 miles, there's usually there's a clogging problem. But if not, there's, uh, if no clogging, replace each of valve. So, very likely I'm gonna do that next if after I clean it and then fix it. Okay, let's hear the EGR. Uh, I just uh, do a little bit crazy thing here. Um, so by looking at the uh, diagram, you know that this terminal here and this one over here, the terminal E, this terminal here, and this terminal in the middle here is the power going to it and this terminal this terminal the two that are out of one the four of them is the computer grounded um, so by looking at that so what I did was this one right here I put in a 12 volt battery I applied 12 volt battery the power going to the two terminal the red and white all these four right here, I ground it. So two green, one yellow and black. Two green, black and yellow. I ground all these. And this thing doesn't move, the, the plunger. See, the plunger is supposed to be up and down because that's how it's pushed down the, the uh, the valve so the exhaust gas can circulate back to the engine somehow this thing had to move, move but I don't know how to make it move but uh, maybe this, this one get bad I don't know because like I said uh, I applied a 12 ohm battery to uh, the white and red one the middle one I put this positive black yellow and two green I ground it to your negative side and this thing doesn't move so maybe this one just bad we'll see okay so here I'm uh, remeasure the resistance um, these three here have six terminal this is A B C D E F so four terminal so basically I will measure the resistance again. This one is supposed to be 22 ohms, around 22 ohms. And now it's say 22.6, so a little bit over. 
less than earlier, earning earlier, a measure 25, and now should say 22 and 6. Basically, what I'm doing here is I measure the distance between the red the terminal and the black terminal here. You can see from the lead, my lead, say 22.5. Over the specification, but not much. 22.9. Okay, so I'm going to measure again this white here and the yellow. Okay, so this one say 22.9. A little bit lower, specified 22 ohm is supposed to be around, let's say. So it should be accepted. So I'm again I measure white and yellow. So I'm going to measure the white and the green here. And the resistance should be 22, around 22 ohms. This green. See this is the right green. No, that's not the right one. So this is It doesn't seem out of spec. Okay, this one say approximately 22. So I don't think it's out of, really out of spec. But we see when I put everything back together. So after I clean it up with this thing right here, carb, uh, carburetor, power cleaner, I put the button in this hole right here and just cycle back and forth. Um, I clean it up, so it looks good now. I tie the valve back. I'm going to put it back on now. Um, I <sighs> You see this anti seize here. I put a little bit around the thread here. You see the thread I put here. You see the white stuff that anti seize. I put it on so in case in the future, if I need to remove again, it's gonna be easy. Okay. See this right here. This is what it's for. Anti seize. So I put a little bit in there. I'm going to put back together. But one thing, um, if you guys ever do this, just make sure this right here, this is the gasket, the white thing. Right here. That's a gasket. So I didn't prepare for this. I didn't buy a new one. But look, the, the, the gasket still look good condition. So, but uh, if you guys do it, just make sure you get a new, uh, a new uh, gasket. Okay, it's quite stuff Okay, so you know I'm working on the EG valve, I have to remove and meanwhile I go ahead and replace the each uh, the PCV valve, which is right here. And it's this thing is so difficult to get it off uh, and put it back in. Here's the old one. I have to break the top to get it removed. See this top right here? Come on. You see that little top right there? On the other side, you see I break it. I have to break it to get it off. It's, it's a pain to, to move, remove this thing. It's so, it's so difficult. But anyway, here's a tip for you guys. Um, remove this uh, Break push the holes here, remove that, remove this, remove these two holes right here. So give you room to access, but here the lightsaber with this thing here. You cannot have this thing. 
without this, I won't be able to have this open. But anyway, this is how you remove it. You use this one right here and just uh, see, hold on the PCB valve itself and turn it. I mean, I you won't be able to turn it by hand. If you remove or install, you gonna have this one to hold it. Okay, so that a little tip for the PCB valve. Okay, so when you install, when you install the EGR valve, this bolt right here, let it loose, these three bolts, let it loose, okay, so this thing can move freely, when you start the thread, you see the thread here, it's a little difficult to start it, but if you get this thing loose, then you can uh, start it easy, when you get the thread in, then you can tie this up, okay, just a little tips. Okay, so I take um, I took the EGR box and clean it up real good. Um, put put everything back together. I hit the EGR here. I take them apart. I clean this up okay. with the uh, brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner very well. I put everything back and run flight like twenty minutes no cold. Then suddenly it pop up again. Uh, the same cup uh, each year about. So, what I did was to solve the problem is I just go ahead and replace these two right here. I'm not sure which one is bad. Um, one, of them, uh, one of them is solenoids and the other one is some kind of solenoid related. By the way, once I rep uh, replace these two things here and the, uh, the coke go away. So now the car run um, perfect now. There's no more. There's no more uh, EGI code. So uh, to wrap this uh, uh, this video up, I replaced these two right here, and the uh, EGI code no uh, went away. So too bad that I thought the EGI is a culprit. Let's clean it up. I take them apart. Doesn't help. Uh, probably help something but uh, it doesn't solve the code. The code is the two here. I'm not sure which one.